This is huge. Really, really big news. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Cynic Alex. And Marvel Future Revolution dropped their first dev note, and it is high quality stuff. Lots of changes, lots of looks into brand new content and characters and more, so you do not want to miss it. Sorry, I haven't been making much content on this channel, but a lot of the things that they're addressing in this dev note for the game moving forward are reasons why, A, I haven't been playing much off camera, I've been playing very casually, and B, playing casually, not playing much, has really killed my motivation to make content. So maybe, you know, I'll be making more content in the near future and coming back to this game in a more hardcore way, but not as a big spender. So... <laughs> Let's jump into the dev notes here. I think these dev notes are very, very well written, and I think they have a lot of exciting information for you that you do not want to miss, even if you don't play Marvel Future Revolution right now. So they start off with a thank you uh, about you know everyone playing the game, and thanks to the fans and all the communication and all the suggestions and things that that, that players have to say, uh, and then they jump right into it. We're getting a level cap increase, and we're getting a, a new extension to the game, like the the, the story mode after maestro fight and the the two additional zones are going to be called distorted boundaries and territory of the outcast and these are connected to dormammu and to the lesser extent mephisto and these are basically two in-game zones one ruled by dormammu one ruled by, by mephisto where they are battling out for supremacy you know dormammu wants to rule every dimension every reality mephisto wants to carve out his little piece of the cake he wants to have his hell zone so we're going to have this sort of mixture of these two supreme villains and you're going to have to go in as the hero in your group and you're going to have to sort things out, which is really, really cool. And so to enable you to do that, because the content up to Maestro and the Maestro fight at the end with Hulk is, you know, in that 95 to 100 level range. This is obviously going to be harder than that because it takes place afterwards and because now you're going from like an earthly threat like Maestro to an otherworldly, other dimensional threat in the sense of Dormammu and Mephisto, so there's going to need to be a level cap increase. Now, just my personal thoughts here, I have no inside information. I think if the level cap increase is small, like 20, like you can go from 100 to 120, maybe even 130, then that's a good, that's a good sign for the game, I think. That's just my prediction. If the level cap is really big, like 1 to 150, or 100 to 200, I think that's a really bad sign for the game long term. That's just purely speculation, purely what my gut, my instinct is telling me, that's all. So this this region looks really exciting to me. They also introduce, or they, they mention some new characters. Not When I say characters, I don't necessarily mean playable characters. They just mention other Marvel characters. So they mention Scarlet Witch and Nico Minoru, aka Sister Grimm. So they are going to be protecting civilians against dangerous foes in the distorted boundaries. Um, and then because of the convergence, that's where you have sort of Mephisto and Dormammu finding themselves face to face and sort of facing off. So this is very, very cool. And they actually tease that they will be releasing even more interesting regions. So they have even more regions lined up for later uh, to add to the five existing regions that we have. You know, New Stark City, Hydra Empire, Midgardia, Sakaar, and uh, Xander, the one that I was forgetting. So that's... That's really cool. Then we have a new Blitz announced. They don't have any pictures for this, but this new Blitz called Chain of the Abyss is going to link to the existing new uh, zone that they're introducing. And that makes sense because you have the Maestro Blitz for the Sakaar zone. You have the, you know, uh, the Laufey Blitz for the Midgardia zone. Every Blitz connects to a zone. Some zones have more than one Blitz. So you can see, for example, New Stark City has three Blitz, four Blitzes. They have Yellow Jacket, Pym, uh, or, sorry, Yellow Jacket, King Tron, um, uh, Modok, and Kingpin. And then some zones like Sakaar only have one Blitz. So for now, the Dark Dimension and the uh, th this sort of Mephisto zone are going to get a Chain of Abyss Blitz, which is going to be over level 100. It's probably going to be at whatever the new level cap is, 110, 120, hopefully. And you're going to be fighting against Dormammu in this Blitz. So very, very cool villain to fight up, up against. And not only that, but they've let us know that Dormammu is going to transform up to three stages, up to three times. So you'll basically have three mini blitzes packed into one blitz. And for those of you who have played, for example, the uh, the raid against Vision, he sort of transforms towards the end of the fight and he gets bigger and it changes the aspect of that fight. You also have in Marvel Future Fight, <laughs> uh, Mephisto transforming twice. So this transforming mechanic is so much fun. 
and I think it will really keep people on their toes for blitzes. There are more changes coming to blitzes in general, a lot of a lot of good changes. So I'm happy to hear that it's not just a new blitz, but it's a change to all existing blitzes. Then we have a new game mode called Epic Invasion with the Mad Titan Thanos. And essentially the way that they're explaining this one is that you defeated the Thanos that came from Xanderth, but there's another Thanos from another dimension. Surprise! And he is multiple times stronger than the Thanos you fought. So this is going to be end, end, end game content you know, max level content that you're looking forward to after level 100. There are going to be five difficulty levels of the Epic Invasion, and its boss is more powerful and dangerous than any other content you have experienced thus far. They don't really give much more information on what the game mode is going to, uh, you know, have in it and what, what's going to what's gonna happen during the raid, if it's going to be single player, if it's going to be multiplayer, but this seems to be geared towards people who are already looking for a much bigger challenge uh, than exists in the game currently. So this is pretty exciting stuff. Now, that's what's coming new, in addition to Magic, the brand new character. So you've got, you know, new um, game zone, new Blitz to go with that game zone, and then a new game mode altogether. Uh, and if, presumably the game zone, the Dark Dimension uh, for Mephisto and, and Dormammu, will have a bunch of new dialogue, a bunch of new cutscenes and things like that. Now let's move on to the game mode improvements, and this is the part where I'm actually more excited for things to heat up in Marvel Future Revolution. So there's going to be continued hero balance improvements. This one's just a catch-all. They're basically just saying that they're not happy yet. They're not 100% happy with the existing balance of characters, and I would 100% agree with that. As someone who plays one of the weaker heroes, Doctor Strange, I do feel like he falls short massively in any kind of player versus player interaction. I just get dumped on constantly by Black Widows, Captain Americas, even Spider-Man and Storms, and really, when I, and Iron Man too, really when I'm queuing up to, for PvP nowadays, I'm hoping to either see another Doctor Strange and cross my fingers, or to see a lower level opponent, and that's just really not fun. So I do think that Doctor Strange needs a mat, like a pretty big overhaul. Star-Lord probably still needs a pretty big overhaul. Of course, there are always characters who will look amazing if you throw $10,000 at the character and you have maxed out gear and you're like 1.2 million power. And I know that those people are going to be in the comments being like, you have no idea how strong Star-Lord is. No, 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 bro. I have no idea how strong your wallet is. And that's true, but that's not the point. If you take a completely free-to-play Black Widow and a completely free-to-play Star-Lord or Doctor Strange, you will very quickly see the gigantic chasm between these characters. And that's why every, you know, lots of whales will end up investing in Iron Man, Black Widow, and a couple of others because they, they're getting more bang for their buck at the end of the day than if they wail on Doctor Strange and Star-Lord. You can still wail on those characters and make them better than noobs and free-to-plays, but that's not the definition of better. That's just the definition of overpowered and wallet warrior. We all know what that's about. So that's cool for the hero balance. They know that it's a delicate thing, so they're not going to rush into it. You know, you have to take it very carefully. You can't just nerf a character really hard because there's tons of money invested in that. But... You know, it's good that they're still looking at this, that they're not happy with it yet. Uh, the other improvements include Blitz Reward. So this is really interesting. They know that um, basically once you hit level 100, Blitz is, is insignificant under Maestro. So basically, as my level 100 Doctor Strange, I still need to get better badges, but I'm only hoping for or looking for a better badge versus Maestro or in Dark Zone. The other blitzes from 10, from level 10 Kingpin to level 90 Laufey are meaningless. I'm only playing them to crunch down the badges into Convergium and to get the gold and the squad XP and the Convergium. And it's just so boring to auto play, you know, 9 times 3. That's 27 blitzes out of 30 that I just blindly auto play. I still auto play the Maestro ones, but you also auto play the other ones with literally no. Like, it's just, it's just bare bones rewards, right? So what they want to do is they want to change the system to have an overall reward count for all blitzes, which means rather than having an individual reward count, you will have like once you complete X number of blitzes, you will get a random badge. Or you'll get some sort of reward. Now, this can be good if they maintain or improve the rewards for blitz. If they reduce the rewards for blitz, this will become a scar and this will become a bruise on the player base. So they have to be very careful with how they handle the changes for blitz people don't like the blitz rewards now but they need the blitz rewards especially the gold and the squad xp and the what the badges turn into which is convergium if they mess with those numbers it's going to spell bad news they want to shorten the insignificant and repetitive play which is excellent 
and they want players to focus on acquiring badges that match their level. And that's what I've been saying recently, that I just don't care about getting a six star badge from Yellow Jacket because it's a level 40 badge. It's useless to my level 100 characters, and it will basically always be useless because I'm going to power level you know, when, when magic comes out or if another character comes out, Black Bolt, let's say, I'm just going to power level him to 100 and I'm not going to bother along the way equipping a level 40 six star yellow jacket badge that I got three weeks ago from the from the raid, right from the blitz. It just doesn't matter. So it's really good that they're doing that. You know, if they can change it so that let's say I can farm three to five six star badges or, or it's three to five uh, level 100 badges every single day, that basically is going to give me at least two more chances, you know, potentially five more chances, because sometimes I play Maestro Blitz three times a day and I get zero good badges. Um, but it'll give you more chances to get badges for level 100 players, which can see significant gains. And it'll still allow players that are climbing from one to 100 to get good badges, right? Because as long as it matches their current level. So that's, that is really good for the Blitz thing. We'll just have to see what the ultimate uh, overall reward count is. And then we have certain changes regarding the uh, reward policy and revival policy. So this is very interesting. Right now, what happens in Blitz, um, and to a lesser extent in Raid, but it happens a lot in Blitz, is everyone will autoplay. And then when you die, you just stay dead for the duration of the fight. And then you basically either win when the boss is defeated or you lose when everyone on the party dies. So what happens is, let's say you and I are both autoing, I die early, and now you have the decision. Maybe you're paying attention to your phone. Do you take it off autoplay and solo the mission to carry us both? Or do you leave it on auto and take a gamble? If you leave it on auto and you die, then we both just wasted time. If you take it off auto and win, that's a kind of a pain in the butt for you. And you're just basically giving me a free ride. And there's no punishment for that. So come, moving forward, there is going to be a punishment for that. So basically, if an agent does not revive for a certain amount of time, the agent will automatically exit from the content and if your HP is zero at the end of a session, at the end of a fight, you cannot claim rewards in Blitz and Raid. So you have to be alive at the end of the content, period. If you are dead, you might as well just exit the content. If you're not going to revive yourself, just exit the content because you're not going to get the rewards. So the, the idea of being carried, the idea of being a lame duck and just coming into the raid with me, dying immediately, and then let, watching me solo for five minutes so you can reap the rewards, that is dead. That's a huge thing for me because it happens a lot and it's really annoying. And I don't even have 800,000 power. My Doctor Strange is what, 760? So I can't imagine how much more frustrating it is for players who have invested even more money. I'm not playing this game and other players aren't playing the game to carry level 100 noobs or to carry level 100 players who refuse to equip their characters, right? I don't care if it's your seventh alt character and you're trying to level your, your, your Star Lord. I really don't care. I'm not here to play a babysitter. So this is one of the, this is honestly one of the most frustrating things about the co-op in the game is having to drag dead bodies through the content. And that's why I auto or I play raid solo. I intentionally raid at odd hours when no one is gonna queue in. And then as soon as I see the queue box at the top, I hit enter battle and I go in alone. Cause I know I can solo the most, the highest difficulty, but when you add in lame duck players who do no damage and die immediately, then I'm just, then I just, you know, have a boss that deals more damage and has more HP for no reason, right? Because the boss's damage and HP scales based on how many players are in the raid. So if I have two players in the raid and they die immediately and it's th it's basically a three versus one, I don't want that. That's 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 dumb, right? So this is a really good change. The other really good change, because I know some people are going to panic now. Oh, if I die, I'm going to have to quit because it costs 100 crystals to revive. They're changing that. In the case of reward count not being deducted, the currency required for revival will be changed from crystals to gold. The gold cost will be set at a reasonable rate. Now, I know gold is already a big issue. And that's actually the next point that they make. Gold is already a big issue for players and not being able to farm enough gold and, and amass enough gold. But this is a really good change because it will take the pressure off from players to, you know, not die immediately in Blitz and Raid because they can refresh. They can they can revive at least once with gold and then play more carefully, play safe and play more safely. Um, but it will also basically remove all of the issues that high level players have. Uh, with Blitz and Raid being a sort of carry me because I'm a corpse type problem. So I think these changes are really, really good all around. I give this a 10 out of 10. Uh, and then the improvements on lack of gold. They don't really give us much. They just acknowledge that gold is a problem, which is true. 
and they want to give us more gold, but that they have to really adjust it delicately and take it very carefully. They don't want to give us too much gold, right? They want you to be short on gold. They want to create some sort of a gold deficit somewhere so that you're always playing, right? You're always playing because then you, the more you play, the more chance you have to spend, right? Lots of games do this. This is not a new thing, guys. They will never, listen, they will never solve the gold issue. Maybe in five years, right? Marvel Future Fight solved the gold issue after like three or four years. That's way down the road. There will be an intentional gold drought for the first two years minimum because it gets people to play and then it gets people to spend. It's just, you know, it's mobile gaming 101. Uh, so that, yeah, that's, that's cool that they're acknowledging it, but we have to just see what they do. Uh, and then we have Dark Zone changes and improvement. This is a really good, these are really good changes. Shout out to the devs here. So they're going to allow you to uh, accumulate XP in the Dark Zone. This is not, I don't think this is like character XP because you can only, well, maybe it is because I was going to say you can only enter Dark Zone when you're level 100, but now there's going to be a level cap increase. So maybe the way that you level up after 100 is not going to be from the Dark Dimension story mode, storyline, but from Dark Zone. That's very interesting. I didn't think about that. So anyways, I don't know what kind of XP you're going to get, but you're going to get XP from Dark Zone. In order to do the Epic Invasion content, you're going to have to get stronger and you're going to get that stronger. You're going to get stronger by acquiring XP from defeating villains in Dark Zone. So, yeah, you know what? It sounds like it sounds like you might need to level from 100 to whatever the cap is by playing Dark Zone. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. They may have to take off the one hour timer because there's a one hour time limit every day that you can play Dark Zone. It's going to be very, very tight and it's going to be very competitive to try to get as much XP as possible in that hour. Uh, in order to level up as fast as possible. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, but that's pretty cool that you're going to get XP in Dark Zone. It gives Dark Zone more meaning right now because at the moment, the way that a lot of players play Dark Zone, I'll tell you, a lot of, like, the majority of players, just they, they go into Dark Zone, they just fly around uh, and they follow a group and the, the, the dedicated group, like X-Force or whatever the, the whale group is, they're focusing on, on you know, killing the boss really quickly, just, just you know, nuking the boss down. Uh, and what the, the other players will do, again, the major, the vast majority of players who are not huge whales in dedicated alliances, uh, they'll just follow that group around, tag the boss, hit the boss once with a skill, and then just chill, sit there waiting for the boss to die, right? And then collect a reward. And then, okay, the group's moving on to the Malakith boss. Okay, let's go. And then you get to the Malakith boss and you boop, one, one attack, and then you just chill and you wait. And it's boring as hell. It's effective, but it's boring as hell. And that's not the intention of Dark Zone. So now, because you're going to be able to acquire XP, you're going to want to go and actually kill the mobs, farm the stuff, kill the bosses, etc. Additionally, this is the best news, one of the best news ever. There's going to be a Dark Zone Channel 3 where they will disable PvP. So no more, oops, I accidentally wiped all these players because I used my alt and I ultied them because of the dumb PvE PvP targeting where it targets everyone equally so probably what's going to happen my guess is channel three is going to become so congested that they're probably gonna have to open another channel for this they should probably have two pvp channels and two non-pvp channels for every server but that's my opinion hit me up in the comments down below and let me know what you think but i will 100 percent be jumping into dark zone channel three i don't want to be bothered by their players trying to troll me especially as a, like a pseudo content creator I just want to farm XP and get stronger and get and get Dark Zone cards and whatever, right? And badges. That's that's what people go to Dark Zone for. They go there for the rewards. A very small number of players are there to just torment other people, um, and they'll still have their two channels to do that on. Then we have Omega War matchmaking improvements, and this is again something that I was knocking on the door of for more than a month. Dark uh, Omega War sucks when you're not a whale because you queue up and you roll the dice. Either you get a bunch of whales on your team and they carry you to a win or the whales are on the other side and they completely bulldoze you and you're just getting spawn killed and it's, it's like legit digital torture. So they're going to be creating matchmaking groups to separate according to hero level. Now, I don't think they should be separated according to hero level. I think this is a mistake, but it's a good start. I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be optimistic about it. This is a good start. But ultimately, hero level is meaningless when you have such a gap like this. Look at this. I have a 362 power level, level 100 Black Widow. I have a 317 level 100 uh, Captain America. 
and then I have a 759 Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is more than two times more powerful than Black Widow and Captain America. So the fact that they're level 100 is irrelevant. It's irrelevant, right? Now, the good thing is for the for the time being, when they introduce the level cap, the whales are gonna, are gonna jump to the high level. So even if you're a more casual or free to play level 100 player who has a big roster, you can enjoy that breather from you know, the, the Darth microtransactions and, and the big boys. But you're going to reach them eventually, and then you're going to be right back where you started. So they need to separate matchmaking groups in Omega War by power. It needs to be by power. I know they want to let whales flex, but there needs there needs to be some kind of separation, right? Because I'm, I'm going in with a 400,000 power character, and I got guys in their team are at 1.2 million. They're literally three times stronger than me. And in this game, three times of power, three times more power, is actually more like 10 times more power. Because I'm telling you right now, if you're 400,000K and they're 1.2 million, you will never kill them. They could they could turn the auto on and walk away from their phone and you would be playing them live on your phone, sweating, and you'll die. They, that's, that's, that's how it works. So this needs to be by power level, not by hero level in my opinion. Um, and then they're doing some skill, the skill preset change improvements. Right now, you have to go into a separate menu uh, in the game through the, the 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 other menu, the sandwich menu, and you have to change your skill preset by going to skills. What they want is on the main screen when you're battling, they want you to be able to not when you're battling, but like on that main page when you're playing, they want you to be able to change your skill presets live near the scroll wheel for the skills. You're still not going to be able to change your skills presets during battle. So that's not being introduced, although they're looking for ways to allow that. But basically, they're going to allow you to switch it on the fly if you're about to jump into a new game mode. So let's say, you know, you just logged in and your friends hit you up and they're like, yo, let's do a raid. So you press skill preset one in the Omega Flight headquarters. Boom, you've got your PVE uh, skill set up. You go into the raid, you guys smash it out and then you exit the raid. You go back to the Omega Flight headquarters and someone's like, yo, let's go Dimension Duel. Let's play some PVP. Or let's do some Omega War. So you press uh, you press the number two for the second skill preset and it changes on the fly without you having to navigate back to the skill menu um, under the hero menu every single time. And then they're gonna do some optimizations for people's phones because they don't wanna have any more Panini makers. And then the last one is they're actually having a survey for magic. Now this is pretty cute. Basically they wanna know what players think about magic and, and what they uh, feel. So please feel free to write your opinions regarding the new hero magic in the comments of this notice. Submitted comments cannot be edited, so submit with caution. So they're not necessarily going to take into account what we say. I mean, they say that they are, but they probably already have a design for the character mapped out. Uh, and they're going to be giving you an Omega supply box, which is a pretty bad reward, but whatever. You get you get this reward for free as long as you participate. So you participate by logging into the Netmarble forums, and there's a whole way to do that. Uh, and then you answer with whatever you think uh, magic means to you. Like, what you know? do you think she's going to be a damage dealer? Do you think that... She's going to be a support type character, right? Um, what have you envisioned? What, what do you picture as a Marvel Future Revolution character when you picture magic with her soul sword and her uh, portals and limbo and things like that? So I think this is a really cool way to do community involvement. Um, I would like them to narrow it down a little bit more, like maybe give us a poll and we can choose from different options. Uh, this seems a bit too, like, you know, if, if 5,000 people participate, are they really going to read through 5,000 Suggestions? I don't want to be the intern that gets paid ten dollars an hour to read those. You know, because what are people going to say? I want magic to be terrible. No, they're all going to say I want magic to be OP. I want her sword to be like a massive just cleave, right? So yeah, a little bit pessimistic there, but I still think it's cool that they're doing this kind of thing for their first brand new character after release. So with that being said, I know this is a really long video. Thank you so much for watching it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on the first dev note. Let me know what your thoughts are on Marvel Future Revolution now that it has been live for three weeks almost on the global server, uh, like uh, globally. Hit me up. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.